Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Now, today we are going to do a bit of a story time. It's not the best story in the world, but this guy here, Mikey, who you all know and love very dearly, had a bit of an accident recently. Uh, probably one of the worst times we've ever had with these guys. And we weren't actually going to share this, and we've kept it quite quiet off social media. But we feel in life good and bad things happen. Not just with birds, but, you know, dogs, cats, humans, children. So here's an unfortunate event that happened to us. Now this happened maybe around 10 days ago, so he's much, much better now. But it was absolutely horrific. It was Sunday morning and we got up just to go for a fly, as we always do. I mean, we fly five, six days a week in multiple locations all the time. Nothing new. We headed up to Canizaro Park, that beautiful hotel which we usually do fly at. It's probably our third most visited location. Um, we did that Parrots Free Flying in the Jungle vlog there. We brought all our bird friends there. We had loads of fun. It's amazing. You can sit outside, you can have coffees, beers, and the birds just kind of fly around and do what they want. We were there probably 45 minutes or so, and it was great. Mikey was being overly social, as he always is. Um, he was hanging out with kids. Uh, he kept flying to the closest table to the restaurant window as he wanted to hang out with as many people as he could. So he just basically spent his time by that window that entire morning and entertained the diners who were having breakfast that day. It was getting a bit windy and a little bit chilly, so we thought, all right, let's uh, get out of here, let's go home. So him and Mia took off on one more fly. Now this fly just shocked us to another level. He takes off how he always does, swoops around like he always does. But then he was heading straight towards the building, the restaurant of this hotel. Now usually what Mikey does when he's heading that way is he heads straight to the roof. He loves just hanging out on that roof. He's done it loads before. He basically heads to the building and then kind of like elevates himself like Superman straight to the top of the roof. It's amazing to watch and he does it loads. This time, and I'm not too sure what happened, he kept heading in a straight line. He wasn't going up and next thing you know, we hear this huge big bang and he crashes into this window. Now this hit would have been, I'm gonna guess, anywhere between 30 to 40 miles an hour. It was windy that day, the wind was on his tail. It would have been like a huge piece of glass smashing you in the front of the face at about 30, 40 miles an hour or getting hit by a car or something like that. I mean, it, it would have hurt. Instantly he fell from maybe two and a half to three meters high right on his back onto the concrete and our hearts literally dropped at that second. Now, before I do continue this story, I'm just gonna point out a couple of things. I probably know a lot of you guys right now are thinking, why aren't his wings clipped? Why are you free flying him outdoors? Why is he flying by windows? Why doesn't he know what windows are? Well, basically, Mikey is well aware what windows are, aren't you? You know what a window is, don't you? And the thing is, this bird has never, ever, hit a window. I mean, that whole day he was flying up to the window to see the people. He knew he shouldn't fly further because he knew there was a window there, which is kind of crazy. But what we kind of drew our conclusion to, uh, the sun was basically shining directly in his eyes and it was pretty bright that day as well. It may have been, you know, reflecting off any cutlery in the restaurant or the glass might have made it brighter in his eyes. He also had the wind on his tail. It was quite strong, maybe 12 to 15 miles an hour and there was probably about 15 or so people standing in front of that glass just watching him. With all of those distractions, I'm guessing he thought, hey, maybe I can fly over their heads and just made a mistake. I mean, I know personally about five or six adults uh, that have been taught what glasses as a child, have been taught what walls are, yet to this day still walk into glass doors and walls. People make mistakes, right? So the moment he hit the ground, I basically ran over as fast as I possibly could. I was probably maybe about three meters away, so not too far. I pick him up by his feet and his head just falls back. There was no response at all. It was like carrying a dead bird. Uh, it was probably the most horrific time I've had with him. I carry him over to a table where I basically lay him flat down and check him all over. I checked his heart first, which was racing like crazy. Uh, I opened each wing just to make sure nothing was broken, checked for blood. This bird was completely knocked out cold though, but his eyes were open. He just had no response at all. And it was at this point where I literally felt I'm going to watch him die. It wasn't fun at all. After about maybe 30 to 45 seconds, he wakes up and he just freaks out like I've never ever seen before. He rolls off the table, he's screaming like absolute crazy and he tries to escape, but he can't run, he can't walk properly, he can't fly. I managed to pick him up and this bird is basically 
wrestling with me to get out of my arms, flapping like absolute crazy, um, trying to bite. He was so disorientated, he didn't really know what was happening, and we took him back to the castor right away and we put him in this crate, just so he could calm down a little bit, but he was not calm at all. I mean, he would have been in some serious, serious agony. At this point, he basically woke up in a ridiculous amount of pain with people just staring at him. Now, once he was in this crate, uh, the sounds that were coming out of him and the actions he was doing uh, is something I never, ever want to experience again. I am going to show you guys this clip. Before I do, just keep in mind it is extremely hard to watch uh, for anyone, I think. It's pretty sad seeing them in distraught and pain, but I feel, you know, like I said, I enjoy showing the good and the bads of bird life. So this was seven or eight minutes after he hit the wall. So that was pretty horrible to witness. That continued for hours and hours and hours. Now once we got home, a mummy human had to basically try and take him out of this carrier, which definitely wasn't an easy task. Every time we put our hands in, he was literally trying to viciously attack us. He'd completely lost his memory in a way. He didn't know who we were, he didn't know who he was, he didn't know where he was, and it kind of seemed like he was a bird that we just caught from the wild. That's the only kind of way I can explain it. So she tries to kind of get him out, and again, this wasn't an easy challenge. She was trying to wrap him in his coat and things didn't go well. I'm gonna show you the clip from this. Again, this isn't the best thing to see. We took these clips so we could show vets and friends of ours to kind of help us out on um, what is wrong with them and what we can do. But here is this one. So eventually, after that, I managed to kind of hold him and we got him inside. And at this point, he's still absolutely crazy, but he managed to remember what his beak was for and he took the biggest bite I have ever experienced from a bird in my life uh, to my little finger, which is still in a lot of pain. There was blood everywhere. It went quite deep, but at that point, with a lot of adrenaline, our main focus was to obviously make sure he is okay. So we took him up to our bedroom, familiar area for him. It's where, you know, we usually hang out and stuff like that. This lovely place here. And kind of just placed him on the floor. Now, he didn't want us anywhere near him at all. The moment we even got close, he would just freak and scream and scream and scream. And this was so heartbreaking. At this point, we're thinking, has he lost his memory forever? Will he ever remember what free flight is? Will he know who we are? It was so traumatic for not only him, but us as well. He couldn't stand properly, he couldn't fly, he couldn't even walk properly, and he just sat there screaming. So this is probably about an hour after the incident. After that, we decided, okay, there is no point in having him kind of, you know, running around this floor. He could hurt himself more. He's probably in a lot of pain. So we put him back in the crate. We covered it up so it would be dark. Birds, when it's dark, they calm down a bit. For Mikey, he didn't really calm down. He made these sounds, which I can only imagine. The sounds a McCall makes when they're crying. It was an absolutely horrible sound to hear. Hey, Mia. 
there, which I am going to share with you guys once again, so... From there, we went straight to the only 24-hour emergency vet. We knew we couldn't go to our local as it was Sunday and they were closed, so we ended up driving two hours to a place called Swindon. We get there, Mikey's slightly getting better. He's still in his crate, and we had some silence, uh, as you can see here. It was great. We were like, okay, this is amazing. Uh, he's making improvements, maybe he's remembering. He even started preening a little bit. Uh, but then, out of the blue, Yeah, so we're not sure exactly um, what was wrong. He had a very, very knowledgeable experience vet. Uh, look him all over, checked all his bones, checked his eyes, checked his beak, checked his muscles. I'm not sure exactly what they did. They basically said he hasn't broken anything or anything like that, which was amazing and an absolute miracle. I mean, if I hit a piece of glass at, you know, 30, 40 miles an hour and then fell three meters from the sky on my back, I'd be pretty messed up. So we're very, very grateful for that. Now the vet did mention he had uh, quite a bit of blood on the inside the back of his left eye. He couldn't see the back of the retina. His whole face was swelled up. He had kind of bruising on the top of his head and uh, the sides of his beak. So it wasn't good, but it was definitely not the worst in this situation. We had a lot of anti-inflammatories to give him as well, uh, painkillers and stuff, so he could obviously not be in agony anymore. The vet gave us a bunch of eye drops, which we had to basically put in his eyes so the swelling would go down. Now, I don't know if anyone has tried to put eye drops in a bird's eye, it's probably the hardest thing you will ever try and do. It's not fun, I'll give you that. Also, while we were in the vet, the vet actually advised me to change the dressing on my finger, as it was kind of bleeding. So I did that, rinsed it out in the sink, loads more blood came out, bandaged it back up, then felt a bit lightheaded and fainted on the vet floor. That wasn't good. Uh, I kind of woke up, didn't know where I was. I basically had like a Similar situation to Mikey, it was crazy. That night we took him home, we drove two hours back, and he slept in our room that night in a crate right next to our bed, just so we could observe him, make sure he's okay. Well, I think we checked on him every hour or so. We, like, one of us would always wake the other one up and be like, babe, check on Mikey, is he okay? He sat there pretty silently the whole night, and then for the next two to three days, he didn't do a thing. He basically just sat. He was dead silent, not a single sound came out of his mouth, uh, he couldn't eat anything solid, he didn't walk anywhere, he didn't even attempt to flap his wings. It was crazy. Even when we went to pick him up, um, he did not want to step up on us, he was always quite fluffed up, always kind of shriveled in, neck down. It was horrible to see. And even within that three days, even if we were holding him, he would just poo on us. Now Mikey is extremely toilet trained, he will always fly to a perch to poo or give us a hint that he wants to go. He'll start making noises, he'll climb down our arm or anything like that. But in this situation, just seeing him kind of poo on us, we were just like, oh wow, this really, really sucks. He can't even tell us, like, it wasn't good. And the weird thing is, I mean, Mikey is such an outgoing, happy bird with this crazy, crazy personality of, you know, being so energetic and so social. <laughs> so to see him just sitting there in dead silence was extremely sad for us. We obviously changed up his diet. Uh, he was strictly on, you know, a lot of soft stuff and a lot of sweet potato, kind of mushed up peas, a uh, bit of porridge here and there. So he couldn't have any kind of nuts or any vegetables that were too hard to kind of break. After about three days, his personality started coming back. Um, he started being a bit more social. He was cool with Mia again. He was a bit weird with her as well. Um, we're not too sure why, but Mia was really, really good through all of this. She really took care of him. She fed him more than we've ever seen, so she obviously knew something was wrong. And she was preening him and looking after him, which was really, really cool. We adjusted his aviary, so his food bowls were right next to his perches, so he wouldn't have to kind of go too far to eat. And we started setting up some sort of rehabilitation for him. For example, we'd put a perch next to another perch, which he'd want to get to. It wouldn't be a comfortable climb from one to another, but it is achievable. But if he really wanted to make it easy, he'd fly. But by day four, he was climbing across it quite happily. Still no intention of wanting to fly at. All. As time went on, probably about a week in, he's getting a whole lot better. I think it was maybe day seven or day eight uh, where he did his first fly on his own. We're on maybe day 10 now and he's only flown twice successfully and once where he tried to fly to a perch and just fell to the floor. So I think the vet actually mentioned that it could have been something to do with the blood behind his eye with uh, not having his depth perception correct, which was something we were really worried about. After a week, we headed back to the vet for a checkup. Now the vet rechecked his eyes and everything and all the blood was gone. He said something about a hemorrhage 
uh, a small tear uh, retina. There was something still not 100% right. I wish I could speak vet language, but they just used all these crazy big words. But he will make a full recovery, which is incredible. It was actually kind of cool because the vet put this buzzy green dye in Mikey's eye. So for that day, he had one green eye and one Mikey kind of gray eye. He looked really funny. I really liked it. We kind of still do the daily recalls with Mia. You know, she'll still be flying around the room like crazy. She's really, I think, kind of enjoyed being the center of attention now because uh, Mikey's a bit more subdued and a bit calmer, I guess. So she's being a bit hectic. From here on out with him, uh, we're basically just going to take it extremely slowly. I mean, he's going to fly on his own terms. He's done a couple of short ones and he feels probably more confident. Not as confident as he used to be, as he wouldn't be sitting on me for this long. He's usually bored of these videos by now. But the moment he is back up and running, you know, we'll inform you guys. Sorry, we kept it kind of quiet for a while, just for the fact we really, really wanted to focus on him recovering and him healing instead of, you know, saying, this horrible thing happened to Mikey and we don't know what's gonna happen, you know, I mean, a lot of you guys love him as much as we do, so we didn't want to stress you guys out and it's also kind of a whole lot easier focusing on uh, his recovery than updating social media and answering thousands of questions on what's wrong, so. But we will try to keep the vlogs coming along. I mean, we just kind of stopped filming because all of the days just, they're pretty similar. You know, you wake up, you go fly, you hang out, you give them food, but you guys keep asking for more, so we'll do that. We're actually thinking about putting together like a toys, diet, purchase, Avery video, because the amount of questions we've had on all of those things are crazy, so stay tuned, as that'll probably be coming soon. He really is so much better now. I mean, he squawked at a pigeon the other day, flying out the window. That used to be his daily thing in the morning, scream at the pigeons. He basically spent a whole week just watching the pigeons fly by without screaming at them, which was really, really sad. I mean, it was kind of nice having the peace and quiet, but deep down we really wanted him to scream at those pigeons and just be himself, really. We were so grateful he still has his memory, obviously. Like, he does know who we are. He's still very, very affectionate with us, and he remembers tricks. He can still high-five, hello. And when we asked him to do wings for the first couple of days, they were like, wings! Like the tiniest, tiniest wings ever. But weaken a bit down now, he can kind of put them maybe mid. He still hasn't got them right up, but all in good time. Isn't that right? My finger's healing too, if you guys did care. I had to go to A&E, there's a big kind of gash in it, it's still not looking too good. It's healing day by day by day. It's still pretty sore. Hopefully he doesn't do this again. But thanks for tuning in, and the moment he's back up in the sky, I get excited for more uh, Parrot Playdate vlogs and Fly Day stuff, and all the cool stuff. So uh, I guess we will see you guys soon. Bye-bye.